concerned in this situation because the lack of a true role model and the truest role model is the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. He never took no one's life but he was a warrior. He never had no degree but he was still a teacher. <laughs> he didn't own any properties but they still called him Lord because he has dominion. So when I come here today and tell you about the love of Jesus Christ, it's not for my benefit. I don't get paid for this. <laughs> I don't get paid for this. I do this for you. I don't want to see you end up in the lake of fire. And you may think it's myths and legends, but you can't blame the church for putting a man in prison for making a law. And all of us have broken God's law in some way, shape or form. So before you go out on this Saturday night, I just urge you, my friend. Why get drunk if you know you need to get drunk to get? Why get high if you know you need to get high again? Listen to a former street pharmacist, I know what I'm talking about. Why look for those temporary highs and temporary lusts when in Jesus Christ you can have everything and more? <laughs> Hallelujah! You see, we're born sober, but we choose to get high. That don't make sense. We, we're born sober, but we say, I need to smoke, it gives me peace. We're born sober, but we say, I need to get high because it gives me peace. I didn't come out of the room with a blunt in my hand, no way. I came out of the room, same way as everyone else, as a sinner. But it's only through the one who died for us, that I'm able to leave this world a saint. My friends, it's not about how good you are. Many people say they're good people, I like to use this example. Somebody in the Amazon who killed their family for money might say they're a good person as well. So what makes you a good person? What do you base your morality on? You need to base your morality of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. My friends, there was a time when this preacher you see here never used to be a preacher. There was a time when I used to just be making money out of illegal things. There was a time when I used to be one of the most hated people in my area because of how violent I used to be to other people. But Jesus Christ showed me that you have to love thy neighbor as thyself. My friends, if the road light was green, I wouldn't tell you to cross the road. I would tell you wait, because you might get run over. The same way that you may be on your way to hell, and I'm here to tell you, repent and believe in the gospel before it's too late. Repent and believe in the gospel. There's many different messages. They'll all tell you to be a good person. The Bible says no one is good but God. And it's seen by our attitude. It's seen by how we act. Nobody is good but God. And this is why we see so many younger generation dying at early ages. How can 15 year olds be getting stabbed and killed? Because they don't have a role model. And we're too greedy looking at our pockets than loving thy neighbor as thyself. So I come here today as an advocate of the Lord to tell you my friends, what is the meaning? What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? Why are you existing? Many people seem to think that you're just here to eat, sleep, drink, work for peace. And even though it looks like some people ain't listening to this message, some people will take this message right home. So I tell you my friends, with all love and consideration in my heart, don't wake up in a place you can't come back from. Don't wake up in a place that you can't come back from. Don't wake up in the judgment of God, but wake up in the mercy of God. So I come here, my friend, to tell you, even the people that say amen, stop being lukewarm. There's something being called lukewarm. There's many lukewarm Christians. It's unfortunate. You see, the Bible calls us to be set apart. Some people believe that because they go to church one Sunday a month, that they're going to make it into the kingdom of God. No. You need to have a relationship with God Almighty. You need to accept the grace and mercy of God. Too many of us, we condemn ourselves for an action that we've done a couple years ago. That's why you see we're in a very confused generation. They care more about the life of a dog than a, than a, than a child in a woman's womb. They care more about the life of a dog than a child that's in a woman's womb. The Bible says there'll be a time when they call wickedness good and good wickedness. They said there'll be a time when they call wickedness good and good wickedness. That's why many people don't even know what gender they are no more. Because we are allowing confusion to enter into our generation. And they don't like this message. That the message is the truth. And the truth is objective. And I'm more than happy to be controversial for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My friends, what are you doing in this world? 
You're not just here to die. You're not just here to work for somebody until you die. Turn, seek the Lord whilst you can still find Him. Repent and seek the Lord whilst you can still find Him. All that anger, all that depression, all that trauma that you're dealing with, you're not going to lose it by making more money. Money is temporary. Money is temporary. But knowing God is eternal. That's why I'm here to tell you, my friends, that God so loved you that He made a sacrifice for you. You see how I know God genuinely loved us? Because love requires sacrifice. You sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your energy, you sacrifice your resources so that the person whom you love can receive more than you. And that's what Jesus Christ does. He sacrificed his life so that we can have life in abundance. But to some people that equation don't make sense. Simply the Bible tells us that through one man's act of lawlessness came death. The same way, if I act lawless today, I can find myself in prison. But through another man's act of paying the bail, through Jesus Christ, then, we are allowed to have everlasting life. It's unfortunate, my friends. Many people don't understand that there is a narrow path that leads unto the kingdom of God, and there's an open path that leads unto hell. That's why many people, a sad fact is that there will be more people suffering the judgment of God than there will be people in the presence of God because of our ignorance and because of our pride. And I was one who used to live in ignorance and pride. People used to tell me, I don't believe in Jesus, but the same people believe in Alexander the Great. The same people believe in George Washington, but they've never seen him. They say, I don't believe in God. I've never seen him. Why don't he reveal himself to me? I've never ever seen the wind, oxygen, or gravity, but I know they're essential to my life. Hallelujah. So saying that you've never seen God is not a good enough reason. The Bible says, seek the Lord whilst you can still find him. So that's why I'm here today, my friend. I'm here to tell you to seek the Lord whilst you can still find him. Take an opportunity to come in union with the grace of God. Because one day, the grace that God is offering us will be taken away. The Bible says, Jesus Christ is the free gift of everlasting life. What does that mean? To have everlasting life is through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why I tell you about the love of God, because I don't want you to see the wrath of God. The same way you cannot blame a judge for sending a prisoner to prison. Because it was the prisoner who made the mistake that caused him to be judged. That's why many people say that God is unjust when he sends somebody to hell. That's why many people turn around and say, shut up whenever I'm preaching. It's unfortunate. Because if I was preaching lies, they would love to hear it. You know, my friend, repent of your sins and believe in the gospel. The truth is not subjective, it's objective. Many people claim that they believe in science. They're the same people that don't know who is a man and who is a woman. But they believe in science. Confused generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Confused generation. I said earlier, my sister over there was clapping. I said, we're in a generation that cares more about the life of animals than a child in a woman's womb. Just, that is a confused generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So seek the Lord whilst you can still find him. Drugs, alcohol, and making money, thousands of pounds a day, I've done it. But my only fulfillment was when I understood my life means more than just eat, sleep, drink, work and repeat. My life has a purpose. And that's why I'm here telling you about the purpose of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Connecting you back with God. Why do you think us human beings are never content? The Bible says God has made perfect, everything beautiful in its time. You see, many people could make two million pounds today and they'll still want to make three million. Many people could buy one car today and they'll still want to buy another car. You'll never ever be content. I don't know what you're looking for. The hole in your heart is because you don't know God. And many people like to do spirituality because it allows them to not be accountable. Yeah man? Okay. You think you're funny? The Bible says there'll be mockers and scorners in the end time. Unfortunately, there aren't many mockers and scorners. But that's just the burden we have to take when we're preaching the truth. Because there's no other truth. And that's unfortunate for the people who wish there was. You see, today is the day of salvation. No one promised you tomorrow. No one promised you next week. And no one promised you next month. But I'm here to tell you today, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. You would stop. Hallelujah. If you knew how long eternity was, you would stop impressing man and you would start impressing God. If you knew how long forever was, you would stop impressing man and you would start impressing God. I received that revelation when I humbled myself before the hand of God. We need to seek the Lord whilst we can still find Him. We need to seek the Lord whilst we can still find Him. Do you know if you die today where you're going to go? Do you have 100% confirmation where you're going to go if you die today? Will you see the mercy of God or will you see the wrath of God? Because you cannot blame a judge for sending a prisoner to prison. It was the prisoner that made the mistake. And many of us are quick to blame God. We say, if there's a God, why is there world poverty? Why is there world hunger? But these times, us human beings have enough money to pay for these things. So why do we blame God? Why don't we blame ourselves? Hallelujah. You see me? I, I never used to believe in God. But the Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. And there will come a point when God reveals himself to you. And the truest love story is this. That Jesus Christ... Our Lord and Saviour loved you so much that he came to save you. Every religion tells you just be a good person. But nobody is good but God. Everybody thinks they're good until their morality is tested. Until they're in a situation. For example, would you rather save your mother or save a child from drowning? Then people are not good anymore. They don't know what decision to make. But the word of God is the same. The Bible says the word is the same today, yesterday and forever. So I'm here to tell you my friends, before you enter into eternity, make peace with God. Before you enter into eternity, connect with your maker. Connect with your maker. Every piece of art has an artist behind it. Every car has a builder behind it. Every building has a builder behind it. So how dare we as human beings claim that there is no God? The Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. The Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. Many people that claim to love you are actually stopping you from knowing the salvation of God. Because they're too ignorant in their selves. Me, myself, I had to humble myself. Many people that claim to love you are actually stopping you from knowing the salvation of God. Because they're too ignorant in their selves. Me, myself, I had to humble myself. I wasn't Christian all along. I used to be doing wicked things. And then I went to Islam. And then I started checking out spirituality. And then I understood that each and every one of them have the same theme. Nothing changed. But the change is this. That Jesus Christ loves you. And that he gave himself for you. I don't preach here for your approval. They're on their way to hell and they don't know it. And they don't like the fact. They don't like the truth of the matter. So I'm here to tell you, wake up before it's too late. I'm here to tell you, wake up before it's too late. We're out here, we're watching all our favorite movie stars. For some reason, they're all doing witchcraft. So I'm here to tell you, wake up before it's too late. I'm here to tell you, wake up before it's too late. We're out here, we're watching all our favorite movie stars. For some reason, they're all doing witchcraft. When did this happen? All our favorite singers, they all do witchcraft now. What? This is normal. But when I tell you about one who counter-attacks witchcraft, his name is Jesus Christ, they tell me I'm crazy. Amen. The Bible says that they'll call you a fool. It's okay though. My friends, I'm here to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Don't waste another moment, my friend. No one promise you tomorrow. We're so quick to put our trust in bus drivers that we've never met. We're so quick to put our trust in a train driver that we've never met. A pilot that we've never flew with. But we don't want to put our trust in the creator of the universe. To me, it don't make sense. But you say we have to be humbled before we can truly understand who God is. You see, pride is one of the biggest killers of our generation. We're too prideful. I was very prideful until I understood who, Je who Jesus Christ was and what he done for me. Many of us walk in pride, that's why we don't see the love of God. But I'm here to tell you, humble yourself under God's almighty hand and he will lift 